All right, here we go. We have Earth Map Diplomacy number two, or sorry, number three, and all the players must go where their civilization is based. I don't know why there's a wolf here. I don't know what kind of version this is of Earth Map, but all the players, as you can see, have started out either on the South Pole or the North Pole, and they are now heading to their respective locations. Let me zoom out a little bit. It looks like um, Mr. Smell Flex Z Novichich is going over to China, where the Chinese are based. Um, we have the Indians here for Hoyo Hoyo. We have the Khmer here for Pero. So they're all on the move, and they're all going to go through the Arctic Ocean to get there. Now, on this side, we've got the Burmese. So we have the Burmese, the Indians, the Chinese... And what was this final one? The Khmer all heading to this little location over here. We're going to have quite the battle. Meanwhile, on this side, we have the Slavs from Zephyrion heading towards Slavic territory. The Celts from HRO, which will need to colonize uh, Great Britain. And then we have the Bulgarians from Lyonnais. Or Lyonnais? 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 I don't know. Who knows? Um, going over here. We also have a treaty length. From the beginning, which is probably pretty good. Um, this is not good from the Bulgarians. But I guess, I mean, I guess he's not too far away. We'll give him, give him the benefit of the doubt. Um, that he doesn't quite know where Bulgaria is. But anyway, he's going to settle over here in Austria. On South America. The Mayans, the very first time we've seen the Mayans, and it's Zabizic here. So he's going to have to go to Mexico, and hopefully he settles. Well, I guess he can settle up here with the Mayans. I'd love to see them in Central America, but I suppose he's going to move a little bit further north. Meanwhile, over here, all these players are getting their TCs set up. It, we do have that treaty for the first little bit, so I don't think you can build within the zone of the treaty still the Burmese are settling nearby Burma the Indians obviously settling on the subcontinent and uh oh that is my controller thing there we go nice we're gonna get rid of that sorry about that and we're starting out with Hoyo Hoyo bringing in a boar as the Indians now, this is going to be trouble for Hoyo Hoyo. I do <laughs> he's walled it off. All right. I don't know why he's bringing this in so early. It's unlikely that Purple is going to steal it. But apparently, he doesn't trust that. And is going to wall the boar off. And uh, is going to bring that to his TC. Normally, you wouldn't really need to bother with Hunt here, I think. You'd set up a, a, a dock and start fishing. Maybe from the shore fish. But... Uh, He's going to bring that in right away, and, and Purple is going to see that being brought in. The treaty is now expired, so players can attack each other. Meanwhile, to the south of uh, Purple, we have Paro being set up over here in Khmer lands, and he's going to TC this wood line. He'll also have a board to take and some sheep and maybe set up his docks too. Looks like there's more wildlife on this map too. The jaguar being present here. The Chinese scouting around, looking for opportunities. Um, Red has set up in mainland China, so this is going to be a nice area for him. Lots of sheep available. Gold, stone, wood as well, so tons of areas for expansion. W. Looks like the eagle from Zabizic is kind of exploring this Peruvian-Chilean area and is going to bring in the sheep. I would expect llamas to be here, but apparently it's a large sheep area. And he's going to bring those over to Mexico. And indeed, the Mayans have set up in Central America here. I was expecting a TC up here, but he's being more realistic. And he will set up in modern-day southern Mexico and Guatemala with the TC. Not a lot going on over here. So he's going to have to set up a lumber camp to harvest the wood from the north. Still has sheep over here in Newfoundland. Didn't quite know the mines made it up that far, but you learn something new every day. And meanwhile, the Celts. The Celts are, are building their city. And the Celts have run out of wood. <laughs> 
the Celts have run out of wood, and we can see them desperate for that extra 10 wood to get a lumber camp. The Celts transporting wood from France over uh, to England and dropping it off, and now he has enough for a lumber camp, but he's gonna get attacked by the wolf! <laughs> Those wolves in France be deadly. Has Loom though and will be able to survive for the time being. Doesn't bring his scout over. And is now housed. But it's going to be a, a little while longer before the Celts can, can really start making any units. I think at this point you just delete your scout surely to make space for another villager. More villagers uh, building the slumber camp as soon as he has 25 wood presumably. He will make a house. What's going on over here in Southeast Asia? It's it's really crowded. And I think that the key here for these players is going to be expansion, right? Like, how long does it take Pero to maybe move down into Australia? There's all these resources available here. How long does it take the Chinese player to move up into Manchuria? Potentially, you know, call it... Well, Japan really doesn't have much. <laughs> but Siberia is looking quite hot. And how long does it take the Indian player to realize that he's got all this space over here in the Middle East or in Central Asia in Afghanistan and Pakistan um, to kind of move into? Similar thing for purple. All this area up in Mongolia, you know, Western China, up into Tajikistan, um, Turkmenistan, Kyrgyzstan, that whole area that he can take resources from. The Bulgarians actually moved over a little bit i wasn't thinking about that i guess the bulgarians made their first tc here and then deleted and moved over right weren't we talking about how the bulgarians were kind of off base there with the tc but now his tc is firmly in bulgaria so so good job good job there and the slavs we haven't looked at them yet are set up in slavic territory so that is encouraging to see. This is a very good TC spot. Unsure why the lumber camp was necessary here. Um, but, you know, he's doing his thing. Also set up a dock right away. Oh, I know why the lumber camp was necessary. Because Zephyrion set up a dock immediately on Antarctica. Trying to get those sweet um, southern ocean fish. And didn't have enough wood to place the TC. So he went with a lumber camp. So he could gather enough wood to make that TC. That makes sense. And now Severian's actually pushing in a deer too. The, the, the Roost hunting bonuses don't just exist in AoE 4. They exist in AoE 2 apparently as well. Let's check on the Mayans. Good little economy being set up here from Zabizic. He's fishing in the uh, Pacific Ocean. And it doesn't look like there's really anyone else there. Also bringing over more sheep. Tons of sheep being collected from all over the Americas. And has this entire space to himself. Okay. Farming eco being set up by the Burmese in, in central China. Maybe the Chinese will have something to say about that. Chinese now fishing off the coast of Japan and Korea. Maybe violating some treaties, but we'll see. Harrow, a little bit idle here with the Khmer villagers, and is fishing in the Indian Ocean. I guess this would be the Pacific. Somewhat Malaysian territory, but it seems like there's no inhabitants on the islands at the moment. I'm really interested to see how Paro kind of moves out here, right? Let's get all the technologies and see when they're advancing to the next stage for the time being. Like, what point does Paro decide that he's had enough, he has enough neighbors? Who is he? Who is he? What? What? Like what? What? what, what uh, how do you? How do you go fog of war? Oh, there we go. There we go. I'm so used to capture edge. I was trying to toggle for fog of war, but it doesn't work on the regular overlay. He's not allied with any of these, or I guess he just doesn't have a market yet. He's not allied with anyone. No one wants to ally with Paro. Absolutely no one, and Pero has no idea that these people are up here. He doesn't see any of them. All he sees is a few chopped trees here or there. He's a lone wolf, exactly. Maybe no one trusts Pero after his last performance where he sniped so many wonders. Who are the strong players in this game? Well, Pero, I mean, wasn't... Isn't someone you would 
typically considered to be strong in terms of like build orders, but god damn, did he ever put on his show last uh last Earth Diplomacy game? Oh my god, this is violent. Paro is fighting Jaguars and he's gonna be okay, don't worry about it. He will succeed against the wildlife. Uh purple is a house builder. Burmese famous for building many houses. Uh, and is kind of walling himself off with houses at the moment. We'll see what he sees. He knows that the TC is there from Paro. He knows that the TC is there from Red. He knows that the TC is there from Orange. And if in doubt, they can just look at the civilizations and guess where people are. Line is saying, greetings neighbor. Who did Line is find? I think he found green. Green is now idled on the islands up here. Not much to do, to be honest, if you're the Celts. And if you lose your transport ship, you're going to be in trouble. And we can see he's already moved. The Celts have already moved over to North America. And the transport ship is idle here in the middle of the Atlantic. So maybe he even wants to consider making another transport ship to get himself over there. On this side, Zabizik, the very first one in the Feudal Age, and is already going to the Castle Age. So good starting build order. Had lots of free space. Fishing ships bringing in stuff. He had the sheep under his TC that he found before. He milled up here just so he could make a market, presumably, and take that one deer. And the build order looks fairly good from him. All right, over in Bulgaria. Mill coming down. And that's probably just to get the market, I, I would assume. Not, not to kill that lone deer and take all that food. I think it would be for the market for sure. And oh my god, what is this? Bulgarians and the Slavs. Traditional allies here. And the, and Linus realizing that maybe I shouldn't take my buddy's berries. So he's going to remill over here and start the farming eco over in uh, Central Europe. Now the Celts. Are they on the way to the next age? No, the Celts are still slowed down by the fact they need to transport all of their villagers away. He's actually moving over to Sweden and Norway to gather some wood. Lots of lots of good wood up there. Tons of soft wood in, in Scandinavia, if you know what I'm saying. Over here, we have Paro moving down into Australia. So he's going to be the first one to move into Australia. Um, looks like New Guinea will be colonized here by the Chinese. That's an unusual approach, considering there's not many resources and only one fish, one deep fish to be had nearby. So interesting choice from our Chinese player, for sure. The Indians uh, still making docks. Lots of docks for the Indians player. Not too many fishing ships, though. And the Burmese are actually kind of stealing the fish from the Indians. So we'll see what the Indians have to say about that. Now, what is the chat going on to on, on right now? Purple saying, hello, Hoyo Hoyo. Do you want to join the Asian Pact? And Hoyo Hoyo says yes. So the Indians and the Burmese look like they're going to be allies here. Check the alliances for Hoyo Hoyo. He's allied. He's, he's allied. Okay, not with everyone. I thought with everyone for a second there. Zephyrion. Okay, so he's allied with the Slavs, with the Chinese. With the Khmer and with the Indians. Now, Hoyo Hoyo is allied with everyone but Pero. Hoyo Hoyo no knows the risk. He doesn't even want to ally with Pero. Pero is a lone wolf this game. The Khmer will be just controlling this whole area of Southeast Asia all by themselves. Meanwhile, looks like the Mayans have expanded down into Colombia and will be taking all the valuable resources of South America. They're also expanding up into the United States and to the north of Canada. So that's interesting. The Celts have founded more col or a significant colony in, in Scandinavia and are now farming there. Also founded a colony over here in Quebec and New Brunswick. And are going to just be taking gold and stone for the time being. The Bulgarians expanding across Central and Eastern Europe. Have now expanded into Turkey. And are going to be fishing the Mediterranean and the Black Sea. Interested to see who the first person to take over Africa is actually. 
in this game because there's a lot of untapped resources in this area. You can see all this ostrich, all this wood in the rainforests of Africa. A lot of chatter going on between these two players too. You see, it's quite crowded here. Hoyo Hoyo says purple. If you want the Middle East, I'll take Africa. Purple says that seems like a good deal. No, that is not a good deal. That is not a good deal at all. Hoyo Hoyo just got access to all of this. All of this. And in exchange, what Purple gets is this. That's not fair. Honestly, completely shafted. You're correct, Edels. Completely shafted. But oil? I mean, I guess. I'll let you handle that if you want. Oh, Purple says, do we need to take care of Asia first? Too crowded here. And he says, I can try. Ooh. Okay, so the Burmese are going to be going up against the Chinese. And I guess the Khmer, but I think the Khmer are more interested in expanding down here. We'll see what Hoyo Hoyo does. I love this mill. It's got a sheep, a boar, a deer, and a, and a shore fish that he can take. I mean, it's every different type of food. It's fantastic. Maybe even make a farm there at some point. He says, I can try, but it's 2v1, so not sure if I can pull it off. Okay, I'm unsure as well. Definitely unsure. And orange, hoyo hoyo, the Indians going hard. Look at this, 1TC, 2TCs, 3TCs, 4TCs. Wow, and I would, I would expect a 5TC somewhere around here too. Crazy stuff. He's actually got the gold. If he has a market, he can just buy himself wood and buy himself food. To sustain these town centers. Alright, they're heading there. Awesome. What's going on in Europe? Still booming up for the Bulgarians. They're almost in the Castle Age. Green, the Celts player, is still in the Feudal Age. And the Celts will run into the mines at some point. Actually running into wildlife at the moment. Will it be enough to save this villager? I think so. Yeah, he's going to notice in time. Celts are not even on the way to Castle Age. Actually making another transport ship. It's just been such a rough go. The Celts have to ferry their way over to all the locations that they want to go. And it's been a lot of idle time. Tons of idle time. I'm actually going to switch this on so we can see the villager counts right now. Red at 62. Zabizic at 91. The Mayans have a crazy boom going on right now. The Celts... At 52, Gray at 38, the Bulgarians. Hoyo Hoyo at 49, but that will start climbing. Pero at 57, Ross at 52, Zephyrion at 38. The slab struggling big time. Even with this fish, I think the fish set him back more than anything. Honestly, there's not many fish down here in the Antarctic seas, and he had to he had to gather wood to make his TC. So I think it really hurt him. I'll boom a little before I go, says Purple. And Zabizic says, Green, you want trouble. So Zabizic wants all of this area to himself. Look at this. He even walled in the mining camp from the Celts. The Mayans are not nice. I don't remember my ancestors talking about people wearing skirts. Wow. The Mayans are just not very tolerant of anyone taking their land. Not our customs around here. Now Hoyo Hoyo is saying, I don't even have a barracks right now. I'll try in a hurry. What's going on over here? Oh my god! There's a castle from the Burmese and they're assaulting the Chinese mainland. And now there's Arambai and the Chinese are stuck. The Burmese have walled them in. The Chinese have expanded up here, sure. But this is a good portion of their economy. It's what this their fish is based. Their gold and their stone is here. Their farming eco is over here. And who did the Chinese have as an ally, I guess, would be the question. Who can the Chinese turn to? Zephyrion and Zabizic. Pero, Linus, Hoyo, Hoyo. So everyone except purple and green. Honestly, I don't think green's going to really be that much of a threat. But they have lots of people that they can appeal to for help. I think he's already appealed to orange. 
By the way, I'm fully out of the Middle East, Orange says to uh, to Purple. Archer range is now coming for the Chinese player. He has 81 villagers, so he should be able to do something. Zabizek is at 134, by the way. So he's booming up. Siege workshop now. More Arambai coming. From purple. And he's on the attack. Meanwhile, over here... The Celts! There's a large Scottish population in Australia, apparently, because they've made their way there. And right now, it's Pero and HRO... That are colonizing uh, Australia currently. Villagers from the Chinese escaping into the frozen north of uh, eastern Russia. More archer ranges. This one looks like it'll be denied, but Skirmisher's now out on the field. He's sitting at minimum range. He's thinking about engaging, but too scared. More Skirmishers on the way from the Chinese player. He's under a lot of pressure currently. And Knights here now from the Burmese. And the Knights are going to be able to, to take care of the Skirmishers. Providing he gets the armor. Mines are now on the way to the Imperial Age. Advancing much faster than the rest of the world. In a, in a t t surprising turn of turn of the tables. Alright, what's going on for the, the Slavs here? Slavs not doing much. Trade now going on between the Bulgarians and the Slavs, presumably. I mean, it's a long way to go. Suez Canal has not been opened yet. Um, so that trade is going to take a very long time to get over there. And is only going to be... 22 gold. <laughs> He's going all the way from Istanbul. Up to what? what is that? Like Archangel? And he's getting 22 gold for his troubles. Not what you want to see at all. Meanwhile, the fight between the Burmese and the Chinese continues. Chinese now have pikemen on the field. But another TC is being pressured. Does Pero want to get involved with this? I think Pero wants to stay as far away from that as possible. And just build up on Australia. Pero also has villagers on Antarctica. He's going to kill this uh, Antarctic wolf. The last one of its kind. Now extinct species. And we'll be placing a mining camp in this location. Can he fit a town center, I guess, is the question. Please don't attack me, and we can share Australia, he says to the Celts. And the Celts say, I won't attack. All right. The Celts also have a TC here, but I think Zabizek, I think he's aware of this. Yes, he is, and we'll be attacking fairly soon. Elite Eagle Warrior on the way. We actually had Vulok for a second. Is kind of disturbing. Lots of docks here for the Mayans too. So they're going to start a trade empire at the southern tip of South America. And I don't know who they're going to be trading with. Potentially Pero over here in Australia. That'll be a lot of gold if they can. Meanwhile, northern Africa. We've got Libya being taken over. Al parts of Algeria, Tunisia. And this is the Bulgarians. They've come down into the deserts. They're in Egypt too. And they're going to be expanding down into Sudan as well. Into Chad. This is, good. this is going to be deadly for Hoyo Hoyo if this goes unchecked. A big expansion. Lots of conics being produced. And if we know anything, it's that conics can't survive desert conditions. Okay? If their horses die, they can just get off and keep walking. Alright. Are the kings or TCs to snipe? No. You can go down to one villager and be fine. We've seen it before, okay? We've seen it before. And now, now Ross is dropping a castle and he's he's house walling his villagers in. But brother, you'd think out of any civilization, the Celts would realize the potential of what Rams can do. And a couple of houses aren't gonna stop them. And this castle certainly isn't gonna stop them. I think the Celts foothold on North America is gonna get Completely battered away by the Mayans. Lots of fishing ships still fishing this uh, this Central Atlantic region. Meanwhile, the battle for China is ongoing and the Burmese are winning. The Burmese are definitely winning and now they have help from the Indians. And finally, the Chinese say, can anybody help? And I think that the play for the Chinese currently, as they, they get kicked off the, the frozen areas of eastern Russia is to load up into these transport ships and find anywhere to go. Potentially Greenland up here is an area they could go. 
if we're looking at the map, South America is relatively open. Uh, the Middle East is open currently. Um, we've got Madagascar. I think are the are the last places that they can go that are that are safe. Oh no, Zabizik is being attacked now from the Arambai, his trading network. He's not going to like that at all. And you have to wonder, like, Zabizik's trade is going this way. What the hell are these ships doing? <laughs> Where the hell are these ships going? Everything else seems to be fine. They're trading with, uh, with red. 192 gold, by the way. Where where are these guys heading? Why did they tro choose to brave the Arctic instead of just going across the Indian and, and Atlantic Oceans? Questions for another time, perhaps. Lots of trade now between Hoyo Hoyo and the Bulgarians. So apparently he's not very concerned um, about the threat from that. We can also see these nice, beautiful regional trade carts that are part of the new patch. These Indian trade carts. Market set up all the way in South America or South Africa, too. So that's a lot of gold coming in. Needs to definitely get the speed though. Only 32 gold? Does he have another market in the way? Surely that should be more than 32 Yeesh. gold. Yo, Garage Slayer. Thank you for the um Thank you for the Prime, dude. Thank you for the, the nice little sheesh there. Let's see how much the Bulgarians are going, going for. 46 gold. Surely there's a market set up closer from orange, right? Doesn't matter if he has another market in the way. This is... This has to be more than 36 gold, right? Huh. Weird. All right, Zabizik, the Mayans player, taking firm control over all of North America and the north of South America, too. He's pop-capped, so he's going to have to think about getting all his techs in now and creating more trade cogs, potentially deleting villagers. The battle for China has now stalled out a little bit. The Chinese have actually managed to push back. And uh, Purple is actually saying, shall we make a large trade line? We can go from Africa to the Far East. So Purple wants to trade from potentially here all the way over here, which is one of the longest trade lines in the game. The Slavs already have a uh, a market over there that they can trade with. Burmese are in the Imperial Age. Should probably get upgrades for all of his units. Doesn't look like he's interested in doing that currently. Take a look at the resources. Yeah, tons of resources. Absolutely nothing in the queue. Uh, but it's still pushing in, and, and the Chinese have to be very careful. Are they going for a castle here, I guess is the question. Castle here from the Chinese. Can't quite place it. And even if he does, I think it's going to get nuked down by these mangonels. Second TC going down as well. The Chinese still have a colony over here. But we can see Pero now using that uh, for housing space for his people. More castles going down over here from Hoyo Hoyo. Meanwhile, on Antarctica, we've got Pero establishing a base. The Celts. The Celts are moving. And the Celts have made it to so South America. And oh my god. If Zabizik isn't careful, he's pop capped. He can't make any military. If the Celts manage to get these upgraded to elite Wode Raiders. And get the eco. The Celts can kill a lot of Zabizik stuff. With this sneaky colony. The Celts are actually everywhere. Still looks like he has some stuff up here. Exactly. Zabizik gathering the relics now. He's got stuff over here, of course. He's got stuff on Australia, of course. The Celts are, are making a name for themselves. What's happening with the Slavs? The Slavs are deforesting most of Russia. Still have a lot of areas to move over to. Check the resources. Lots of resources in the bank. 128 villagers for them. 
The Burmese are just happily booming. Um, killing the Chinese. And now a trebuchet coming over. So that's going to be very tough. Chinese are the one of the only players still in Castle Age. It looks like the Bulgarians are still there. And the Indians are still there. But the Indians are on their way up. So they should be fine. I like this from the Burmese too. Just keeping those, those units there. Making sure the Chinese don't expand. I think the Chinese should have snuck off more villagers a little bit earlier, to be honest. And tried to secure maybe part of, of South America. Hoyo Hoyo is question marketing, marking. And the Slavs say, don't worry about the Castle Orange. I'm going to attack Purple. Oh! So the Indians were quite concerned about the Slavic Castle here. And Pero has actually made his way back. To this area. Saudi Arabia finally being uh, being settled here by the Bulgarians. Lots of archer ranges going up there. Hoyo Hoyo says I'm allies with purple. Oh! <laughs> the Slav said don't worry about the castle orange. I'm going to attack purple. And Hoyo Hoyo says dude I'm allied with this guy. <laughs> and <laughs> Blue says oh. Then you can worry. <laughs> How polite those slabs are. How polite they are. And Ch Chinese are saying, you can worry about someone else now. I'm bottom score. He didn't escape with any of his villagers, by the way. He just sat here with these transport ships the entire time. I think he's got villas over in this location. I think his last villa is here. Unless there's something on, like, Japan. Yeah. No, he's got villas here that are about to die. And Pero has villagers up here. What the hell is Pero doing in, in Irkutsk? Well, he's here anyway. The far east of Russia. We have the Khmer establishing a base. And I think, uh... I think... The Burmese are now hunting down these villagers from the Chinese. Chinese wisely splitting one vill. Burmese finds it though, and these vills are going to die. And we'll see if the, if the Chinese player realizes that he has a villager left over. L resources in the bank. You can make a market, I guess, and sell some stuff to buy some stone to make another TC. I guess the question is just, where do you put it, right? You'd love to be able to put it on New Guinea here. Makes more villagers. But uh, this has been taken already by Pero. Okay, we've got the, the Silk Road being set up now. Lots of markets here from Purple. Potentially trying to trade to this location. What's going on in South America? We still have... Okay, we have Elite Road Raiders now from Ross. Chinese say, okay, Davy Jones life for me now. Dude, you still have a villager. Press the idle vill key. Gray says, Red, come to me. I bet I bet you he doesn't realize he has a villager. He thinks he just has fishing ships. Nothing in the queue from Red. Lots of champions in the queue from Blue. What's going on here? We're about to have a big battle. Huge battle between purple and and blue and he's actually asking do we go after Blue now and this notification as the Bizek puts down the Mayan wonder should be the answer to that Do we go after blue now? No, we do not We go after teal now <laughs> Purple saying that was a misclick. I'm, I'm struggling to figure out where the misclick was Maybe he attacked someone by accident. Maybe he honored someone. Holy! Okay. The Indians have fully mobilized, fully militarized their economy here. Okay? There's nothing left. There's no resource gathering on the subcontinent. It is now just a training facility. How many stables does this man have? 11 stables. And nine archer ranges, sorry, 11 archer ranges alone on India. 
All right. Meanwhile, in Africa, Bulgarians still gathering some wood. They're still trading over here. Got another castle to secure that area. Looks like Paro and Green are trading quite a bit too. But that is a long trade line all the way around Africa. All the way to this dock in Ireland. So maybe not the greatest. Maybe not the most efficient trade line. Still, they're getting a lot of gold. 120 gold from that. Lots of farms in this area and lots and lots of champions. And of course with the Slavs, they will get Drazina. These champions will get area of effect damage. And we're going to watch these Cavalier just melt. You can see those HP bars. They're taking splash damage from the champions. They are Burmese Cavalier. So can't be upgraded to Paladins. And they will die there. However, the Slavs are losing castles. And now we have Imperial Camels pushing in with Trebuchets behind. So I think the Slavs' time is over. As two players gang up against them. They seem very unconcerned about this monument from the Mayans. But if we know anything, it's that Pero will be concerned. And Pero will be trying to snipe that. Pero also has the castle over here. Looks like the Celts are getting a little bit of revenge for being kicked off of North America. They're attacking with the Woad Raiders now. I don't know if they realize that this castle is down here. He does. He knows. So he can choose to attack and secure all of South America for himself. Pero is over here too. A lot of this is getting wiped up. Bloom Darcher's on the way for Zabizek. He's freed up a lot of pop space so he can make military now. Blue is pushing back, actually. Very surprising. The Slavs pushing back. Kira, thank you for the host. This is an Earth Diplomacy game where all players had to settle on their homeland. Anyone having an, have an issue with attacking Purple, says the Bulgarians. And the Burmese player, Purple, says, I do have an issue with that. Thank you. And then the Bulgarians asking the Indians, are you bros with purple? And indeed, they are bros. So Gray is basically saying, I'm going to enemy purple and putting a giant target on his back. Red says, no one kills purple. I owe him a big one. So Red wants to come back and kill purple. Where is Red's economy based? Red has a transport ship over here, and Red has villagers over here! Who is Red in it? Can Red survive? Can the Chinese survive here? He's allied with everyone except he's neutral with green. Oh god. And he's enemied with orange and purple. He needs, to, he needs to make sure that Green becomes an ally with him so he can survive. This is the only place he has anything. Blue wanted to attack me, someone told me. I wanted to be ahead of the curve, says Purple. As the Celts are going to wipe up this base down here, presumably, from the Mayans. Still have a monument being built here from the Mayans. It isn't up yet, so people aren't too concerned. At the time being. Uh, but they should be worried in the future. And now the Bulgarians, just as we thought, the Slavs are going to be fully pushed back across Europe. The Bulgarians come to their aid. Yeah. The Conics, the skirmishers behind with trebuchets. Could this be the end of the Indian-Burmese alliance? Could this be it for them? That's a lot of Conics. From the Bulgarians. And the Burmese, I mean, their economy... It doesn't look that great, right? 117 villagers. Let's check the res. Lots of wood, but like no food and no gold. Once this queue is done, they can't really make anything. They do have the Indians as an ally, though. Let's check the res from Hoyo Hoyo. Oh, baby. The Indians have quite the queue. And the Indians have quite the resources available to them. Obviously, with all of this area throughout Africa... Also, the fact that the Bulgarians are now attacking the Indians' ally probably isn't the greatest, but it looks like they've actually 
allied together? Yeah, he says, if I pull back purple piece, I am bros with you, bro. So at one, one second, he's helping the Slavs. And the next second, he's bros with the bro. And now the Slavs are dead again. I'm telling you, man. Never get involved with the land war with Asia. Honestly, it doesn't work out. These Eastern European Central Asia politics, they're murky. Honestly, they're murky. We kill blue, then go water. So it's 3v1 now. It went from 2v2. It went from 1v2 to 2v2 to 3v1. I mean, the Slavs just don't have any friends here. Meanwhile, Pero, the man who won last game, convincingly, is just chilling in Australia. Um, let's see how many relics he has. He's only got one relic, and he's chilling there with the Celts player. Uh, who is also in South America. And now they are sharing this space with Red. Trying to push back the Mayans. The Khmer are here with Ballista Elephants, which is going to be really, really tough for the Mayans to deal with. Especially with the Siege Onagers from the Celts. 98 HP on that bad boy. Purple says, I could use gold. Hoyo Hoyo says, okay, getting coinage or banking. Alright. This is right. That... <laughs> What is this? That is like... Dude, that is like the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. That is the Mayan homeland right there. And he is securing the... He is. He does not want anyone fucking with the Panama Canal. I can tell you that much. The wonder is up now, by the way. We have 497 years. And that is a good looking wonder. If I do say so myself. And the best thing about this wonder... It's the fact that green has an outpost foundation <laughs> in the middle of it. And we can see that's just great. That's just fantastic. Can you show us where you do live, David? N no. <laughs> Sounds like a hacker question, bro. I'd be right over here. All right, so the Celts are pushing in now. Jeez. Looks like Pero is now now has Trebs, his first of the game. We saw what he could do with Trebs last game, and just straight eagle spam, and plumed archers from uh, Zbysek at the moment. Yo, Joe Mike MC, thank you for the prime, brother. Welcome. On Antarctica, still not much going on. We had uh, one dock over here for trade by Pero. He's already mined out the resources. Uh, looks like one sheep available there for the Celts player and some fishing traps from the Slavs. And that's about all the Slavs have at the moment. Yo, Therano, thank you for the, the five gifted too. Thank you, brother. The Bulgarians not helping at all as the Slavs are firmly pushed back across their territory. Slavs only with 17 villagers now. And we'll have to keep an eye on where they expand as the Burmese and the Indians are coming in hot. To their territory. Looks like the Slavs are running in this direction. They're running to the Celts, but the Celts don't have much here either. Celts still have their one TC on England, uh, where they settled. No one has made their way to Greenland, which is probably the last open area of the map currently. Uh, so people probably want to think about going there. Remember, Peril won the previous game by uh, colonizing this area. So it is viable. Meanwhile, over here, Red is going for more housing and should probably think about another TC. And there is the other TC from Red. Unfortunately, within range of that tower from Zabizek, but I think he's actually Jeez. allied with him. Yeah, he is. Chuchastics, thank you. Sheesh. Thank you for the five gifted, dude. Appreciate it. Do you think this would be as entertaining with pros? Well... I was thinking about having a show match. Eight person Diplo. Eight pros. Um, we give them area. Like they get to draft their sieves beforehand. Which ones they want. 
and um, we show them the area they have to set up with the TC, and then we have scaling prizes based on where they finish. I'm going to NA, says Hoyo Hoyo. Hoyo Hoyo is going to NA. Okay, well, where does he land? I guess there's area here for him to land. But uh, Zabizek has pretty much, like, locked this down. Oh, I guess the north you could make in it. Yeah, the north is really open. He's got outposts here, but it's super open, especially considering he's he's completely distracted with this stuff in the south. I think Hoyo Hoyo could definitely land there. Can they split prizes? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think he'd be last man standing. If you give any pro, if you give pros an option to split prizes, suddenly there's like five of them at the end, and they say, "Yeah, I just want my money." Yeah, webs. Well, it's last man standing, so. Anyway, Burmese still have all of this area, all of this wood to chop, all of this gold to take, etc., etc. The Bulgarians are now coming in, but the the Slavs having a little bit of revenge here against the Indians and against the uh, the Khmer, somehow ending up with a ton of hussars in their economy are going to be able to harass the trade lines. Going to be able to harass the farming economy and everything from these two civilizations. So, Zephyrion getting a little bit of revenge. The camels are now coming over from the Indians. But it looks like he's done some damage. Thanks and sorry, dude, says the... Oh, there's Zephyrion. He says, I'm dead, so take this gold and avenge your Slav bros, my Gul Bulgarian bro. He's not your bro. He abandoned you. He says, thanks and sorry, dude. I have to work with Purple for a little... Bit. I will do all I can to kill him later. Okay. So the Bulgarians are planning on abandoning the alliance with the Indians and the Burmese, and they will attack them at some future date and avenge their Slavic brothers. Does Blue have any villagers? He does. Where are his vills? They're all fishing ships. <laughs> <laughs> They're all fishing ships. Blue. 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 Where are you? He's got two down here. Oh no. I don't think he has anything, folks. He doesn't. He has nothing. All right. Here comes the landing. We've got the Burmese with a fleet now, including two trade cogs. They're just escorting the trade cogs over, apparently. Green is fishing up here, so maybe he realizes Greenland is open. And here comes the fleet from the Indians. And what's in these transport ships here is he's going to take try and take out that wonder from the Mayans player. And we've got... Oh, my God. I think that's enough. Honestly. 14 Bombard Cannons in one tra That is the most valuable transport cargo I think I've ever seen. Can someone do the math on how much res is invested in that in that transport? I Actually, I want to see it go down. Honestly, I want to see this fire ship stake it out. Well, the cannons are going to come out here. Looks like for the time being, Hoyo Hoyo is neutral right now with Zabizek. Still neutral with him, so I think not all of his... Yeah, his guys won't attack the villagers automatically. And these cannons, if he now dives for this, he can kill this wonder easily. It's at 352 years. It didn't even get close for Zabizek. Mayans are not the best Civ to have in a situation like this. Their late imp is really underwhelming when you have lots of res. So he's going to have to do better than this to protect it, honestly. And Hoyo Hoyo needs to do much better than this if he's going to be sniping wonders. He could already kill this by now. Going for the big shots. Going to wipe up a few of those. 3,275 wood and 3,150 gold. Oh my god. 
There's a lot of res invested in that transport ship. And there goes the wonder. Dead. Zbysik's going to have a bigger, have to have a bigger military next time. I think, honestly, if you're the Mayans, the only way you can protect a wonder is if everyone else is out of res or if you're on an island and you make galleons. I honestly think so. You're never going to protect it with your land military. Mayans land mil military just sucks too bad in late game. And Hoyo Hoyo is actually going to try and establish a beachhead. I'm not sure that's going to work though. Zabizik has tons of res in the bank. He can push this back. Okay, I heard another wonder going down. Where, yeah. Where is that? He's Oh, he's built another one. He's building a, another one even farther back. Okay. So he's not done. He's going to keep pressuring there. The Bulgarians have also started building a wonder. I don't think I've ever seen the Bulgarian wonder. So that'll be fun to see. He's built it in Africa near the shoreline. Like this is just not a good spot for it, right? It's too near everyone else. And it's right beside his shoreline. So you're going to have to go Navy and you're going to have to go land military to secure it. I, I don't think this is a good play from him. He's building it anyway. Let's see what Red's boom is like. Red has been booming up for a while. Looks like Zabizic is trying to attack uh, the Kel Kelts player a little bit. And the Kelts player is having none of that. It's going to clear up the remainder of this stuff on South America. Or try to. Still quite a big army here from the Mayans. Big shots. Wode Raider Siege Onager is like the death for Mayans, honestly. What do you even do against that? I don't think you can do anything against that. Wode Raider Siege Onager. All your units die to it, honestly. You need a wide open field and you need to hope the buddy, the other guy is not good at micro. What's going on here? Oh no. Oh my God. Is anyone else under the impression that the Bulgarians may be planning for an offensive? Cause I don't, something's telling me that they're thinking about invading this way. The problem here is that I think he's still allied. Yeah, he. <laughs> if I'm the Burmese in this situation and I look over here, I'm not thinking, oh, look, my ally is just going to help me out. No, 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 no. I'm thinking, oh, shit. I need to kill this guy immediately because something bad is, is going to happen to me. Purely defensive build, clearly. Very defensive. I got banned during, during Dave vs. Goliath because I didn't know 11 to 1300 ELO can't compete. Am I still banned or was it just for that day? Kind of funny that you asked that because if you were banned, you wouldn't be able to ask that. <laughs> You wouldn't be able to ask that, dude. <laughs> Alright, what's going on over here? The Celt's still expanding a little bit. Market now coming down from him. Pero is actually over here. So Pero's getting involved, again, with some cannon galleons. He had some uh, ballista elephants over here earlier. I wonder what died. It looks like a whole lot died here to the ships. Um, From Pero. Pero's trade line looks like it's completed or maybe he gathered all of it it's all all the trade boats are in the same area they're not spread out like you would usually see a trade line being not quite sure where to go from here says purple as hoyo hoyo starts his own wonder and that is in central africa this is an okay location but can still be ranged by the water here by cannon galleons so maybe not the greatest it's going for castles it's got a bunch of docks 
This is probably one of the best areas on the map for a wonder, to be honest. Bul Bulgarians say we kill Americans. Now, this is posturing, I think, from the Bulgarians. Because if you're going to kill the Americas, what is this? <laughs> I think he's getting ready to avenge his Slavic brother. Yeah, he's got four. Okay, he's got eight transport ships in the queue. So maybe. And what the fuck is this farm? That's a T90 farm if I've ever seen one. Maybe he's interested in landing over there. But this tells me that he's interested in pushing over the li this location, which wouldn't be a bad play, honestly. Still got a market here from Zephyrion. Probably one of the... This market and that dock, the only two things keeping him alive at the moment. There's not much else from him. I guess this dock, too, that Teal is trading with. Lots of transports here from Gray. He's got Krepos over here. Looks like Green got wiped up a little bit as well. Is he is he allied with Green? No, he was enemied with Green, so he was the one get wiping Green out of Western Europe. How are you doing with your American friends, Red? Says Gray. Gray is actually allied with Red, so he's checking up on his little his little brother over here. Red seems to be doing fine. He's got 136 villagers. Wow. I don't know where they are. Probably all in fishing ships, right? Yeah, a lot of fishing ships as part of that. Only 94 regular villagers. Why is everyone in South America, says the Mayans player. Is this the end of World War II? <laughs> let's see what Hoyo Hoyo says. All right, let's coordinate this landing. And Red says in response to the Bulgarians, he says, we are doing fine, quite regild. I think he meant quiet rebuild. And Hoyo, Hoyo says, what if we snuck up north around the Arctic? That's a good plan. There's not much here. Sure, Europe was too crampy. Nice life down here. Bulgarians now say, Red, do you have any good allies in America? I mean, he does. They're letting him build up, right? He's got green. He's got yellow. I think Red has a lot of good allies, honestly. It's only a matter of time, folks, before Pero starts sniping, by the way. Perro's being attacked by some random Mayan uh, galleon over on this side. I, I think Perro's strategy is not to build a wonder yet. I think Perro flies under the radar, builds up his resources, and then makes a wonder later. He's actually getting his trade line wiped up by these fire ships. So that's a problem. Red says, well, we don't talk much like on a Sunday lunch with family. Okay, so he's not communicating with the people down here. And Zephyrion. Oh, dude. Yo. Slavs are a little rat, man. He's letting Zavizek know what the plan is. He's, he's, he's part of this conversation. And he's telling him that they're coming from the north. Now Zavizek is forewarned. And Zavizek actually has... Wow, the Mayan trade fleet. It's quite extensive be in this one big ball yes amazing i'll try to land in north america and build elephants i don't think that's a great plan because there's a lot of trebs here that are gonna you gonna deny your, your foundations so I get a charity tax break just for hanging out with you. such a beautiful voice less than three thank you thank you wrath appreciate it welcome back lots of fire ships here from uh, the mines. Lots of micro here from the other players, but the fire ships are slowly whittling down these numbers. And the Mayans have lots of resources to spare. And he's just going to go with full Navy defense at the moment. Okay. Trade is coming back. 62 gold apiece, so he's going to add that to his bank. Look at Pero's resources. 
51,000 gold. He just needs wood. Honestly, and wood is going to be the biggest issue. So I think if you're Peril right now, you want to build up a ton of villagers in this area and start chopping as much wood as you can. Because I don't think there's anything left in Australia. There's definitely nothing left on your homeland over here. Uh, the only other wood would be Africa, a little bit in Greenland, and then South America. Okay, we see plumed archers coming in here. And these plumes are actually, instead of raiding the units, they're actually going to do more damage by just drawing the Siege Onager shots. And finally, we see our Slavic brethren resigning. He says, GG, well played, everyone. He couldn't quite win against the 2v1. He hung on for a little bit. He warned the Mayans what was coming. And now he's going to tap out. Another castle here from the Bulgarians. Remember, all of this military production, When he, if he chooses to turn on the Burmese, he can produce a million units uh, whenever he wants to. Also, discovering Greenland, the Bulgarians. Uh, not the Vikings this time. Just the Bulgarians. Uh, so maybe he goes and settles that a little bit later. He's also making his way over to the north here. Potentially northern Quebec, Labrador is where he's going to land. Zabizek actually passes him with the fire ships. That is a that is a high heart rate moment there. For the Bulgarians. That was a lot of units garrison in these ships. And he's going to unpack and attack him right away. Unfortunately for him, didn't have any villagers. You really want those vills in the transport ships so you can add production buildings behind. But uh, no vills there for the time being. Castle here from Pero. He's going to extend his control up north. And it looks like everyone is just kind of converging on this area. The wonders in Africa are up, by the way. We have this lovely Bulgarian wonder in the north. That is not safe at all. This one is a little bit more secure for the Indians in Central Africa. But it's still pretty exposed from the north side. I, I could see Pero sneaking in here with some trebs and killing that. Not the safest thing in the world yet. Foundations were denied here by Zabizek. I landed north, says, says the Bulgarians. Uh, and the Burmese say, I'm trying to deal with water. So we see he's got ships here and we've, he's got more ships being built over here. To kill the ships now from the Chinese. The Chinese are fighting again in a position to make Navy and lots of resources in the bank from them. They were down to one villager at one point on New Guinea. Don't really have anything over here. The dock got cleared up from them. So not really a threat over on that side, but are distracting the Burmese long enough for potentially the mines to get away with that wonder victory. See how secure the wonder is from the mines. I feel like this wonder is just not ever going to win you the game. I think the Mayan military on land is just way too weak to do anything. You've only got eagles, halberdiers, and plumes. Like you need something else. You need a power unit, right? You just don't have it as the mines. Meanwhile, on this side... Galleons moonwalking or moon sailing, rather, away from Hoyo Hoyo. Are still attacking the trade lines from the Chinese and are still being pushed back. Or sorry, I guess it's the Chinese being pushed back by the Navy now. This army here from the Celts is, is still around, by the way, and it hasn't been used in a very long time. Rams and transport ships are being built now in this location. So I'd love to see the Celts kind of move up here and land and take out that Mayan wonder at some point. <laughs> and this is why... This is why I'm saying this wonder is not secure, okay? This is why I'm saying it's not the best wonder in the world. Does Zabizek even notice this? Hoyo Hoyo is going to come around, take out this castle right away. 
and then just snipe this wonder for free. It's a commando mission here from the Indians player. And he's going to take this out. Zavirion in chat. Well done, dude. Just attack it, Hoyo! He's, he's doing hit and run with his bomber cannons. That's okay. The villagers aren't going to take these out. This wonder isn't going to stay up. And there goes the countdown. Down to 100 or 313 years now from Zabizik. And you just have to think, like, why do you keep letting your wonder get sniped? Why do you have so much military pop, like, down here? Should be all around this. You should be making fortified walls everywhere. If you're going to go for a land wonder. Anyway. Check out the little eco here on South America. All that wood is being chopped, but there's still plenty left over. And this little power block of the Celts, the Khmer, and the Chinese is going to be really tough to deal with. Just because they have access to all this res. And everyone else is going to be running out. You can see Africa is running out of wood. Let's check the res from the Indians player. Only 6,000 in the bank. He's still got a lot here to take, but lots of ships queued up. And that's going to eat away at his wood count pretty quickly. Check the resources from the Burmese player. Like, no wood in the bank. He's got all of it in the queue. Once those ships are gone, it's going to be really struggling. The wonder for the Bulgarians is still up, by the way. 390 years. The wonder from the Indians, I mean, it's... I think it, this is just easily sniped. I think Paro takes this out 100%. We know Paro's capable. Chinese are still fighting on water. Honestly, I think this is a waste of resources if you're the Chinese. Um, you shouldn't have been fighting him when they could have just been focusing on Teal. You could build up your res and hope they waste it against him. But, I mean, the Chinese are still fighting the good fight. Trying to make something happen. Looking for that army from green. It was it was built up somewhere. We actually have keeps here from the Bulgarians. Those, those are interesting looking keeps. See if green still has that. Or if it got taken out by the uh, the navy. Yes. He does have it. And he's moving. Is he moving to Northern Europe? Does he want to take out the Bulgarians? Does he want to kill this wonder potentially? Yes. Interesting times here for the world. Chinese being pushed back again. Paro is over here with cannon galleons. They're not doing much. Pero is building Trebs. Oh, baby. Pero is building Trebs on Australia. And the, I told you, man. I told you the strat. Honestly, I told you the strat. He's going to let everyone else waste the res. He hasn't been making much military this, this game. He's going to let everyone waste the res. He's going to snipe all the wonders, slowly build up his castles, get a good fleet, and then make a wonder here. Honestly. We saw it last game, and I'm surprised that no one's figured it out yet. Because he's got himself another island. And he's had trade routes this entire time. Let's look at his gold. He's got 56,000 gold in the bank. And you better believe he's making a beeline straight for this wonder. You better believe it. All he has to do is unload here. His trebs can attack from, like, here. Not enough time for them to react. Good little navy control here from Pero, but the Mayans are pushing back. And the Celts wasted all their all their military over here or transporting it to the north, wherever it is. If it's still around. I don't even I don't even think it I don't even think it's still around. Oh my god, what happened? Oh! I was wondering where that Celt military was. Aha! Uh -huh. Unloaded in North Africa, and that's exactly what I said would happen to the Bulgarian wonder. It goes down. That was never going to survive, though. Never going to survive. 
amphibious landing from the Scotsman in North Africa. You were wondering? Yes, I was. And he answered my question. The Mayans once again securing North America. And maybe after everyone is out of res, the Mayans have a chance. But we know that it is very easily sniped uh, with their late game composition. Paro, that is an that is an ambitious mining camp, my friend. Paro sees a gold. Paro wants the gold. I don't know if he's actually sending bills there right now or if he made that earlier, but... Hoyo Hoyo says, I'm going to go to the Indian Ocean, guys. Getting paranoid, not going to lie. So many of my past wonders snipe. He's learning. Okay. Hoyo Hoyo is learning, friends. And Purple says, okay, I can see that. Red does have some here. Meanwhile, South America... Getting completely destroyed. This is their power base over here. This is Red's entire economy taking wood here. I think Red is allied though with Teals, so he should be fine. But still, he's enemied with purple, enemied with orange. So they're going to snipe him from the water. Green is being completely wiped up. The Celts have nowhere left to go. 57 villagers only. No gold in the bank. Only food, only wood. Kelts are just now farming here, and that's it. Getting their houses wiped up over here. Getting their colony, or I guess their starting base on the UK wiped up. Purple now has started to build a wonder in the middle of Asia. Wow, that was loud. Thank you, Mel, for the raid. Hope you had a good stream. Yet yeah, another Earth Diplomacy map. I know you love the last one, Mel. And once again, we have Paro. And we have Hoyo Hoyo in this game too. And Pero, big surprise, doing exactly the same thing. And now, oh no! Oh no, Pero! Pero! You were so peaceful here for so long with Ross. And Ross is being betrayed. Pero taking no chances whatsoever. I told you he's going to build a wonder here at some point. Needs to get rid of all of this. That is his ideal wonder spot. And now purple saying my entire navy is rip. And it looks like green's entire land military is rip. As he's just going to take cannons to the dome. From all of these. Meanwhile the Bulgarians have landed again. In Labrador and northern Quebec. And are going to be making their way over to the rest of the Mayans economy. Now the Mayans have control over most of the wood left on this map. There's still wood here, wood here. Bulgarians may have control of this. Although the Mayans are going to be fighting them for that. So Zabaisic is still in a good position. And Zabaisic also has somewhat kind of control over this wood too. So even though his sieve may not be as good as the others... He's, he's looking good for the late game. Pero started building a wonder. Of course, it's right here. And Pero will likely start going into Navy. I want to see where the Trebs are from Pero. <laughs> oh, baby. Pero has 16 Trebuchet in a transport ship. Pero, are you going to slip a transport ship into your trade cocks? Because India. And Hoyo Hoyo is here. Oh, no, dude. No. They know. They know. They Hoyo Hoyo was in the last game. He knows what's up. He knows what Pero does. And Pero's going to get his ship sniped down. Meanwhile, the Mayans still pushing in. The Celts, though, have some Wood Raiders left over. And those are going to be pretty deadly. However, Purple is here. And he's going to be killing the villagers from red and killing the Wood Raiders from green as soon as they get within range. The Celts forced to go for a town center here. He has nowhere else to go. I think the only other place would be Greenland, which has still not been, not been settled by any of these players. Definitely the only other place to go for the Celts at the moment. 
There's a one there now from the Indians on the subcontinent in their homeland. You love to see it. Wonder for Burmese is almost complete. Only 200 years left on this other wonder. So even if this one goes down, the Indians are still going to have a wonder over here that will have roughly, what, 100 years left on it by the time it's complete? Or 400 years left on it, rather. Gray is the biggest question. Yeah, Gray. I think the problem with Gray is like, where do you set up your wonder? Do you set it up here? Where this monastery is, I guess, right? Gray has a lot in production. It kind of looks like... Ah, kind of looks like Gray is interested in maybe making his way over here at some point. It's got conics built up. It's got rams building. Maybe thinking about killing this wonder in the middle. We'll see. Alright, so the wonder is completed for the Burmese. And that is going to be in... Is that... I guess that's Western China, right? Yeah, that would be Western China. Maybe Kyrgyzstan. Somewhere around there. Paro's wonder is still under construction. Doesn't quite have enough uh, villagers to complete that. Peril's also going for more trebuchets. Where are they being completed from? Of course, right here. Orange is going to think he's safe because he cleared he cleared these trebs down here. Orange has to remember, though, that Peril is Peril. And Peril will always have trebs somewhere. So you have to be very, very careful if you're him. That's Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, and Turkmenistan. No, not right there. It isn't. Kazakhstan is up here. Uzbekistan is probably right here. Turkmenistan is right here. I think since this is India and you go up north, I think this is China. Yeah, I think that would be China. Red and teal are sort of beating me. Not sort of. Okay. So, purple saying he's losing the war on water. And red has quite a navy. And red's saying vengeance. Remember, red dibs killing purple. People asked him if they wanted to kill purple and said, red, red said, leave him for me. And red had one villager when he said that. Pakistan? No. Pakistan's over here, my friend. <laughs> All right, the Bulgarians still pushing against the Mayans. Lots of docks up here, but uh, it's kind of run out of steam. And once again, the Mayans have managed to secure North America and an impressive queue of trade cogs and um, trebuchets. Mayans are also coming for this wood down here, sharing it with red. So red is looking okay. Terms of economy at the moment. It's got 91 villagers. Has a lot of navy. And we'll check the wood count from purple. Once the queue is gone, purple's going to be running out of wood. Orange is going to be running out once that queue is gone. Only 9 on wood right now. Is it possible to get a mod for this map to show the lines all over to show you what countries the players are occupying? Dude. This would be just one... It would be too complicated. <laughs> it would be too complicated. Can you imagine Europe? Oh my god, it'd be lines everywhere. You wouldn't be able to see. Alright, Paro. Alright, Paro! I see you, Paro! Ballista elephants. Cut this tree. Cut this tree with the ballista elephants. Come in with the trebs. Paro, you need to be paying attention. Paro? Where the fuck are you going, Paro? Paro? Paro, where the fuck... He deleted the other transport ships. He's gonna... The boar! 
The boar is delaying him. Okay, does Hoyo Hoyo notice in time? Yeah. Does he notice in time? If these ever unpack within range, this wonder is dead. Doesn't matter if he brings over the uh, the Imperial camels. This wonder is gone. Pero once again, snipes a wonder. It's going to be 100 years. Pero just needs to unpack. They're busy talking right now. And Hoyo Hoyo is too late. He's too late, dude. He's too fucking late. Pero again. No, he attacked the, he attacked the archery range. He needs to attack the wonder. The camels are taking out the trebuchets and the wonder is going to die. It's dead. And doesn't Orange feel like an idiot? 100 years left on your wonder, and now you're relegated to your secondary wonder in India. Ha 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 ha. See you later, kid. And Pero is going to get his up right around the same time, just to rub it in your face. What the fuck were the castles even for? Orange is allied victory on. Orange says, yes, this is a good question. And then Orange says, bruh. Seems to be a common response. Um, oh my god. Is that like the trick to navigating over ice? You have to go... Backwards? Well, he's figured it out. Okay, there's the wonder for Pero. And the good thing about the wonder for Pero is if you're not looking closely, it looks like all these other things. So I think it might actually be beneficial to have this many castles involved. And Pero definitely needs to... Um, Pero definitely needs to get some navy out. I'm looking at his, at his resources. He has the res for it. Make more docks, make more navy. Navy is all you need currently. Well, after you kill these wonders, of course. Red is going all the way around for trade, by the way. You should have heard your mom last night. She sounded like my great aunt when I pulled a surprise visit. She was like, Holy smokes, it's been three years, and holy smokes, I caught a Dave stream. Yo, Magadai, welcome back, dude. I think you're the longest sub here, maybe. Thank you for the three years, brother. It's been a long time, dude. Alright, can Hoyo Hoyo defend this? It's making more castles. If they're not careful, if there's only like a hundred years left, I don't think they can... I don't think they can kill the castles fast enough, honestly. So if, if Hoyo Hoyo lets these wonders get down to like 50 years and then kills them, I honestly don't think the other people can kill him fast enough. The only way he loses is if they manage to land trebs. And look at what he's doing with the houses, guys. The problem with these houses, though, is you can land trebs right here and sit them, but he's making a house wall. You knew about the fence across Australia, but did you know about the great housing wall across the shoreline? All right. Red's still building up over here. Still has villagers chopping wood. His eco is probably looking decent. Yeah, he's got a decent amount in the bank. Building up another navy down this way. Still being pushed back by purple and orange, the forever friends. What are the Bulgarians doing, I guess is the question I have. It's got lots of stuff in the queue. Only 62 villagers, but he's pop capped. And is he still fighting over here? Like what what's happening? Where's all your Okay, there's some villagers. There's some fire ships. He was actually following or guarding this transport ship with all the fire ships. That's funny. Dad gone. Red is still trading in the north. Who is Red trading with? These Chinese traders, man, they are industrious. What the fuck? Is it... The Mayans! Where the fuck did they come from? 
is probably the question that the purple's asking himself. As the trebuchet come from the north. You you've known about horse archers coming out of the steppe, but did you know about the famous siege engines making their way down from from the frozen north as well? The Mayans sneaking the transport ships, presumably with this transport. Or sorry, the trebuchets with that transport. And is gonna be able to take out the wonder, and now suddenly Paro is just behind Hoyo Hoyo. And this wonder is extremely exposed on India. Mayans tunneled through the center of the earth to Mongolia. Maybe. Actually, if we check the date on the Mayan calendar, uh, you can actually pull it up and it just says, <laughs> Fuck you, purple. Alright. What? I don't... I don't know. <gasps> contingency planning. You love to see it from green. You absolutely love to see the contingency planning here. These are the last men and women of the Celtic Empire. And he's waiting for his moment to reappear. He's actually... He says, Celt. Celt. What do these stand for? <laughs> what is that? He spelled Kelt. But what is it? What is this? Arrow to the right? Kelt is dead? Celtic? Well, that C would be the other way around. Okay. Well, we'll see. Um, we'll see what he can do. Meanwhile, Paro is trying to push India, and Paro has help. Paro has help from Red, and if we know anything about the Chinese, this game they are vindictive. Extremely vindictive, okay? They, they hold a grudge. Remember when he had one villager, people were asking him, do you want me to kill Purple? And he said, no, leave him for me. He had one villager when he was saying that. And since Orange is, is allied with Purple and helped him uh, kill the Chinese earlier, obviously the Chinese player is going to be teaming with the Khmer here. And they're going to be looking to take out this wonder from the Indians. And the Indians just don't have a fleet. They could just sit here and range this wonder with galleons. Or with cannon galleons, even better. And the Indians aren't going to do too much about it. Bulgarians still fighting. Still having their little war here with the Mayans. Bulgarians, looks like they don't get fast fire ships. What, what is Zabizek saying? You aware of this? Aware of what? And green or gray says what the? Oh <gasps> no! Did he run? I think he ran into these ships. Oh, the Celts! The Celts are done, and he says GG. The Celts are dead, and now the wonder from the Indians is being attacked by the Chinese. Where are the cannon galleons is my question. Okay, they're finally attacking that wonder. The Indians are desperately trying to repair, but there's nothing here. There's nothing here. They can't defend this. They can repair for a while, but there's no fleet. You can't kill a fleet with just land military. He's now producing some ships and sending them over. This wonder is going down bit by bit. And I think the last wonder is standing is going to be Peros or Purple. He's made another one. And he's building up more production buildings. He's not going to let uh, the mines sneak in as easily this time. How are we going to kill Yellow as the wonder from the Indians goes down? And Purple says, I'm friends with him. We'll try to sneak. Hoyo Hoyo says, guys, no sad face. 
And Red, Vindictive Red, says, you backstabbing orange. <laughs> Dude, how much you want to bet Red is Team Pero? Till he dies. Red is just Team Anti-Purple and Orange at this point. That was a terrible spot for a wonder anyways. Lol. Yes, indeed. And Pero is now retreating back. And holy fuck. <laughs> yeah, I'm friends with him. We'll try to sneak. Yeah, that didn't. How'd that? Yeah, how'd that work out for you, Purple? Honestly, I think Barrow's just OP in this game mode. Show me something different. How are they killing that? Yeah, that's the question I have. I mean, they have 302 years. Barrow has fast fire ships. He's got galleons. He's got all the castles. He's got houses everywhere. He's walling up in front so they can't land now. I think he just needs to... He needs to get something up here for sure. It's going to be really tough because even if they land Trebs, they're only going to be able to land like two or three at a time, right? Big trade line here for Zabizak. Let's see what the Mayans have to say about this. The Mayans are still fighting their little warrior against the Bulgarians, but I think they made a truce. And Zabizak is probably the strongest player in this game. So we'll see if he comes over here and does anything about it. Red sending his navy to the south. Peril is now trading with the dock up here from Red. Gray says, I have rams on the way, but I don't think they'll even make it. Oh yes, galleon's a good idea. Purple says, I'll try to build a dock in South Pole and sneak galleons. But that's not going to happen. <laughs> that's definitely not going to happen. Not with Red here, not with Vindictive... Vincent over here. Gray where I'll back you up. Okay, so they're all teaming together. We got gray, we got purple, and we've got orange all teaming together to go after Pero. And blue is kind of crying in defeat right now because gray promised him. Remember this, the Bulgarians promised him when he was kicked off of Europe, he said, I'll help you, brother. I will avenge you, brother. And now he's teaming up with the two people who 2v1'd him. Where are your rams? I'll back you up. I think his rams are in production, right? Actually, there's a whole lot of stuff in production. <laughs> if you're great. He's pop-capped here. He's being kicked off North America, finally. He's got villagers down there. Where's the rest of his army? His army's here. Like, that's nowhere near Australia. You're going to need a whole lot more than that to be able to push Australia. Orange is now building up Navy. Okay. All right. Let's check his resources. Wow, he's built up a navy, but he can't really do anything once that navy is dead. Purple is now building over here. Our Vindic Vindictive Vincent is over here trying to uh, stop him, but doesn't actually see this. Pero does, though, with one fire ship and might actually send navy that way. Gray! Oh, no! Gray! No, brother! Those... New Zealand was not the right place, my friend. And there were 10 rams in there. And he says, rip my rams. They're not going to end up on Australia. Wow. Like, is this... Is this the most fortified position you've ever seen in Age of Empire? It might be. It honestly might be. Like, holy fuck. Check the resources from the Khmer player. Okay, he's lacking on wood. But still, only 226 years left.
Taking out the military. Let's check the res from orange. Won't have that much more once the uh, the forest is cleared up. They're lucky that the Khmer don't have uh, heavy demo ship. More elephants in production from purple. Let's check his resources. He's got a little bit, but he's he's fully um, queued up. So the cannon galleons aren't actually doing anything. Navy is still being pushed back here from orange. Remember, he doesn't have much once his navy gets cleared. 400 wood in the bank. Yes, the question for me, as Purple says, I'm building up here. Well, you're not building up there, though. Like, you say you're building up there, but you're pop-capped. You're actually, you're just, you're thinking about it. Okay, finally, it looks like he deleted a bunch of villas and he's canceling his queue. And finally, he's building up here. But red is coming over. Is red allied with yellow? He is. And red might be actually coming to help against this navy from orange. My question is, what's going on with Teal? Teal's running past the navy of orange. He's getting free hits. He's enemied with orange. So Zabizic is now going to try and make his way over. And purple is saying orange try to distract him long enough. I don't think orange can. I think Pero with 191 years left with all of this Navy over here, even a Tas Tasmanian tiger to help him out is easily going to be able to defend this. Even has stuff over here attacking the trade line from Zabizic. Greenland still not colonized. It's just surprising to me. Zabizic's fleet now getting killed even more by Orange. I think they need to ally at some point. Making his way over here and he's going to run into the ships. And what, like, what do they see from their point of view? What do they see? They know. <laughs> they can see. Because of the line of sight around the wonder. Exactly what's going on here. And now Orange is saying wood is 400 gold? Well, yeah, that's what happens, dude. That's what happens when everyone's making a fleet. Look, you can't even... Like, you can't even afford it. He can afford, like, what? 1,300? 1,400 wood? Why did Paro make a TC? I don't know. Honestly, I have no idea. Maybe... Oh! I think he made a TC so he can make Vils to repair the Wonder if he needs to. I think another TC here would be smart, actually. I have 20 Cannon Galleons to snipe. Go in now to distract. Okay. Okay. Purple's gonna try and pull up here. He's gonna try and pull up Ignit and snipe this. I think even if these ships aren't here, though, I don't know if 20 cannon galleons is enough. <laughs> They're going to get absolute... Look, go in and distract. Guys, make sure you're distracting over on this side. Even Red's getting into the fight. Look, you're not distracting enough. I need support here. <laughs> I think they're supporting you, dude. They're, they're literally yeeting in there. Purple says, I need support. We'll see what he can see. We'll go on to his point of view. Here comes Red. He's going to run cover for him a little bit. All right. Paro's going to notice this. Paro's going to see all these cannon galleons coming in incredibly slowly. He has demo ships here. This is just the most failed attack I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> I mean, 127 years, guys. You got to distract better than that. And Pero is coming over with more ships. Still attacking these. 
has more ships coming over. Red is running out of navy. Red is trying to guard the cannon galleons from purple. Peril has lost two castles now. But all the 20 cannon galleons... Look at Red even sniping the demo ships before they make contact. The 20 cannon galleons are going to go bye-bye. And uh, I think that's the end of the chances there for Purple. Another castle does go down. And Purple saying use. Damn, guys. I think that's GG, says Hoyo Hoyo. And we'll see what the resources are from Paro. Oh, looks like Paro's buying wood now. Paro is buying wood, folks. There's only 105 years. Can they possibly do it? There's more navy coming over here from Teal. Let's look at the res from Purple. Purple can afford more cannon galleon. I think there is a world where they can do this. They just need to clear up this navy from Paro. And I think Paro should be retreating. Honestly. Paro should definitely be retreating here. You can't toss away a navy like this. Unless you're sniping cannon galleons like this. Oh, Purple's wasting these. If Teal's navy got here... If Red still had his navy alive, and if they could use Purple's cannon galleons, I think they can kill this wonder. But instead, Purple's just yeeting in. And he's going to lose all of these cannon galleons. He's going to lose even more over here. Galleons. Doesn't have the wood to keep producing. Purple, I come with you 24 galleons. <gasps> the Bulgarians, not elite cannon galleon, by the way. Just regular cannon galleon. Red still kept his navy alive. The Chinese have been really impressive. Um, keeping their navy alive here. Has more in the queue, too. The Mayans are here. Looking to do damage. The Mayans! The Mayans! That's... <laughs> That's not gonna work. I'm sorry. That's just not enough. Oh no. Seed trams. Okay. The Mayans have landed. Kind of uncontested here. The great house wall is going down. Everyone converging now. We've got cannon galleons. There's only 63 years left. Pero is pulling all of his forces back. He's got villagers ready to repair. If he needs to. The Mayans are making their way over with rams. Units being taken down by the castles. Lots of cannon galleons here from the Bulgarians. The rams are actually doing something here. Look at Paro's res. Paro only has villagers in the queue. He doesn't have enough resources. If he loses this, he's out of the game 100%. He's... Why are you using wood to make a house? You need wood, brother. He's getting ready to repair. But he only has 45 wood in the bank. He can't repair with only 45 wood. Why the fuck are you making a house? Needs to delete all these palisade walls for wood. 43 years, and the Cannon Galleons are getting really close now. Still Navy left over from Orange. I think P Peril needs to start sniping these, these Cannon Galleons. Take out the Cannon Galleons. The Galleons don't matter at the moment. Take out the Cannon Galleons if you can. Okay, Peril's out of Navy. So much Navy being streamed across from Red. And Purple. And Orange. And Grey. It's getting close now. 33 years only. One siege ram left for the Mayans. 33 years. Red with cannon galleons. He's going to be attacking the castle. Can they even range that with non-elite cannon galleons? Paro bought wood. So he can, he can repair the wonder now. He's got all these villagers here. 24, ye 24 years, dude! You need to attack that wonder now! 
Can they even get within range? Red is trying. Red doesn't have a lead. It looks like red can't range it, but can purple. Wait, can you even range the wonder, says Hoyo Hoyo? 16 years, it's not enough. It's not enough. Paro is going to win again. And they it's the greatest debate of all time. They fought so long. And they can't even range the fucking wonder. Suddenly, purple. He's got three cannon galleons shooting it, but Paro is here repairing. Ten years left. Nine years left. Paro needs to repair even harder. He does He's only got 87 stone. He's only got 87 stone. He bought some more. Okay. But he's running out of gold now. Six years. Five years. This is over. Paro's won again. Two times in a row. The Earth Diplomacy Champion. Mr. Paro once again says, GG, well played. Get out of my game mode. I own this town. So close there. If, if there was another 10 years, I think Paro runs out of res and I think that wonder dies. Wow. It, you think after the last game's performance, people would be aware of the danger of Paro. But apparently not. Paro is the champion of this game mode, 100%. What a performance, again. Crazy. We had him, you know, just kind of enemied with everyone at the start of the game. Moving to Australia and then betraying the Celts on Australia to secure this position. I think he betrayed him less because he was worried about him sniping the Wonder and more just because he wanted the space to build his little empire. You guys are so sad I get a charity <clears throat> tax break just for hanging out with you. I just want the slam emotes. Okay, okay. Thank you, brother. Welcome. We had Africa being taken over by the Indians and, of course, the Bulgarians uh, teaming with the Burmese and the Indians who took over basically all of Africa, Asia, and Europe and couldn't get anything done. Meanwhile, Red making his way over from one villager on Papua New Guinea and he made his way to South America, allied with Zbizek, was allied with the other two players here, but outlived them. Zabizek also trying for two wonders of his own. That didn't work out. Unfortunate being the man's. Kind of fortunate and unfortunate, though, because he had so much space to grow. He just didn't have the army that he needed to secure uh, a wonder victory. And then, of course, how could we forget the Slavs being double teamed here, not finding a new home, and the Celts making their way from the Isles all the way to Australia and then South America and just unable to hold on with their final settler ship running into the Navy from Zabizek. Great stuff there. Great performance from Paro once again, and great stuff from all the players. Thank you so much, guys. Another entertaining game. It feels like this, this format just can't help but be entertaining. Honestly, we've had three games and three amazing, amazing last minute nail biters. Fantastic stuff. GG. Statistics. Look at that. Zabizek way on front. Paro. <clears throat> largest army at the end. Just waits, man. He snipes. He lets everyone waste their own res. Gets the trade profit. Crazy trade profit. And then uh, when everyone else is out of res and the wood price is high, he just comes in and and gets his wonder down. Look at that boon from Zabizek early. Crazy, man. 200 villages really quickly. Was Peril being slung? No. No, 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 no. 